telecommunication services in the area put us in a competitive disadvantage. And 71% actually said that it's going to put them in even a worse position in the future. So it was definitely something the county wanted to work on. And Amanda and I got together and we applied to become a broadband, blind and broadband community member. And in the, we had about a week to put it together. We, we waited a little too long to the deadline. But we were able to get over 20 letters of support within that week. And that just showed the commitment and the need here in the community of, of how broadband really is an issue. And we wanted to focus on public and private partnerships. We did not want the public to own the infrastructure. I know some communities have tried that model with varying degrees of success, but we definitely wanted to focus on partnerships. So here are our committee members. It was a core group of about 20 to 25. Um, there were some staffing changes here and there in, in the cities and the townships, but this is kind of our core group, and you can see it covers a wide range of sectors. Uh, public, private, we had providers, we had educators, we had uh, libraries, senior centers, uh, a good variety of skill sets brought together to, to work towards a common goal. And our number one priority when we met at the vision meeting back in Big Lake, I think it was in March or February of 2015, we had 68 people show up, which I think at the time, Bill, you had said was one of the largest community vision sessions that we had seen. But we did a lot of education throughout the community over this process, and, and this is the map I always brought to the different meetings. Red is a not good. <laughs> Sherburne County, you can't read the percentages, unfortunately, but we are the lowest percentages for the, what is it, 10 by 3? Uh, we were only 33%, and if you see some of our neighbors, they were in the 90%. So that, that just showed what a competitive disadvantage we were at from a business perspective and from an education perspective. So this led to uh, the community outreach grant, and Jolene's going to go over that in a little bit here with a lot more detail. We had many ideas that were brought forward from that community vision session, and we kind of ranked and prioritized them. We met about bi-monthly, and at each meeting we would vote at the end. We described the projects, vet them a little bit, and we'd vote to see which projects were worth applying for. And so that's kind of what, what our process was. And key findings, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we did have community-wide support. That's over 65 community leaders showed up for that initial meeting. Consistent engagement. We, we had meetings every other month, and like I said earlier, every meeting had a full table. Elected official support. Uh, we met with our state legislators, our local county commissioners, our city council members, our township. Never once did we hear, why are you guys working on this? It's not important to this area. It was always unanimously, thank you for what you're doing. How can we help? And then the Blend and Broadband program established relationships that go beyond broadband. I know, Barb, you and I uh, have worked on a lot of projects because we met here at this, this uh, program. Another advantage we had is the local press was very helpful in helping us publicize our successes. We've had numerous articles relating to broadband, and I think it got the provider's attention. As we go through the slides today, you'll see that we're in a better spot than we were two years ago, and a lot of it had to do with the, the press really helped us publicize the issues. 